Having a dog that jumps up people every time they meet someone is an absolute nightmare. It might have been cute when they were puppies, but as soon as they start to grow, it can go from cute to frustrating to downright dangerous. And in this video, I'm gonna explain in detail how you fix jumping instantly. But before I show you the how, it's really important that we understand the why, because without the why, the how is irrelevant. It won't work if you don't understand why it is that we're doing what I'm going to show you to do. Now, the theory behind what I'm about to show you is underpinned by something called operant conditioning. Now, operant conditioning is just a fancy sciency word that explains how dogs learn, how most animals learn, humans included. And we can break it into two categories. The first category is how dogs learn to do something new. The second category is how dogs learn not to do things. A quick human -y example of that would be if every time you brought me a coffee, I gave you a $100 bill, there's a very good chance that you might want to bring me another coffee. And if I give you a $100 bill when you do that, there's a very good chance that you're gonna try and bring me as many coffees as possible to get as many $100 bills as possible. That is something called reinforcement, positive reinforcement. And that's one of the aspects of operant conditioning that we're gonna be talking about later when it comes to stopping dogs from jumping. The next human-y example would be that every time you see a fire, if you put your hand into that fire, you got burnt, there's a very good chance that you're not gonna put your hand in the next fire that you see. That's something called positive punishment. And again, it's the way that all animals learn. It's how we learn, how dogs learn, what things we should do more of because they give us good results and what things we should do less of because they give us bad results. But we're going to use those two examples with your new understanding of operant conditioning to really drive home that message of exactly how you can quickly stop your dog from jumping. So now we've got that boring science-y theory out of the way, we can put it into practice. And the way that we're going to put it into practice to deal with jumping is we're going to do a three-step process. And like most three-step processes, it's really important that you follow all three steps or it won't work properly. A three-step process naturally starts with step one, which is you must learn how to challenge the undesirable behavior. And when it comes to jumping, it is the only way that you're truly going to be able to get on top of it. This is where we're going to be tapping in to that positive punishment that we talked about. We have to let the dogs understand in a language that they speak that they understand that jumping is unacceptable. The method that we're going to follow is something called a leash correction paired with a verbal correction. Now the reason we're going to pair it is because we want to very quickly get to a point where we don't need any leash corrections, we don't need any physical corrections and we can communicate to our dogs when they're doing something wrong, we can use positive punishment with nothing more than our verbal correction. When they jump up we're going to provide a slight bit of pressure and that pressure is nothing more than a little pop pop on the lead. When we do that we're going to pair it with our verbal correction so that might look like a ah uh, ah uh, or a no or a ch and a little you see that's a verbal correction that we've used here and Riley unfortunately thought she'd done something wrong but that is brilliant that's proof of the pudding that I didn't need to physically correct her and she looked at me with oh what am I doing wrong I'm sorry I didn't realize now that was a little bit unfair to her but it is a good demonstration of how when you do these things together you don't need physical correction all the time we do it in little bits to keep the dog safe to stop them hurting people when they jump up but when we do it in a smart way in a loving way, in a balanced way with the other two steps that we're going to talk about in a minute, we don't need physical corrections in the future. So after step one, we can then move on to step two. And step two is to redirect. So we've corrected in step one using a little bit of operant conditioning. Now we redirect the dog and we redirect them to what it is that we do want them to do instead. Now that might be different in different situations. In some situations, it might simply 
actually be what we call all four on the floor. That might not need a command. By simply challenging the behavior of jumping, their four feet go back on the floor and then we're happy. We have challenged and then redirected them to that behavior. However, it might end up being something a bit more advanced. It might be a sit and stay or it might be a place and stay, but we're gonna leverage stuff that we've taught the dogs and we're gonna redirect them to that because that's fair, that's loving leadership. Then we get to move on to the third step and the third step is, is the fun step. It's the step that we all want to spend as much time in as possible. But this is the step that will not work unless you use step one and two as well. That's why it's so important. We move on to step three, which is going to positive reinforcement. Again, every time you bring me a cup of coffee, I give you hundred dollars, you're probably gonna bring me more cups of coffee in the future. Exactly the same principle. When the dog is displaying the behavior that we have redirected them to, we reward that behavior. Now that can be nothing more than this. Puppy's favorite thing in life is physical attention from me. She's not very food driven and she's not very toy driven but she's very motivated by my physical praise so the fact that she's up here I've asked her to sit here and wait nicely because she's doing so she's getting a scratch behind the ear and a cuddle from me I am reinforcing this behavior if we only did step three and only did the reward piece of the puzzle well if jumping up somebody is more fun to them is more rewarding to them than the reward that I can offer well they're going to choose to do that instead or maybe they just don't know that that's the thing that they shouldn't be doing so they're confused because it's a normal behavior for them to offer. But if we only ever punish our dogs, then we are gonna create fear and anxiety. We have to communicate, don't do this, but please do that. Please do this, stop doing that. Challenge the behavior when they do, redirect them to what it is that you do want to see. And when they're displaying that behavior, then you can praise and reward that behavior heavily. You can apply all the food and treats and toys that you've always dreamed of, but you can't have one without the other.